Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Corda. Now Corda is a blockchain framework. Now you, you might be thinking, why another blockchain framework? See, think about it. Everyone is talking about blockchain. Now it is because, it may be because of cryptocurrencies or it may be because of different companies adopting this uh, blockchain technology. Now in the articles, if you go online, if you see tech news, Apart from the mobile news, you, what you can see is different companies are adopting a blockchain for different use cases. And that's why it becomes important for us to understand this technology and how we can use for different use cases. Now coming back to the cryptocurrency world, everyone want to buy Bitcoins or Ethereum because it is going up. And I'm not fascinated about the cryptocurrencies, but the underlying technology. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, they work on blockchain. Now, if you are new to blockchain and if you just want to understand what is blockchain, uh, imagine blockchain as a database, but not centralized, a distributed database. Because what happens is in centralized system, example, if you talk about social network or if you talk about video streaming service, or if you talk about different companies doing interaction, all this data is getting stored on central servers. Example, if I, if I tweet something, that data is owned by Twitter on their server. If I upload a video on YouTube, it is owned by YouTube. So I don't want that scenario here. I want to own that data. In the same way, if we talk about companies, when they are doing transactions, so though that data is getting stored on central servers and they have a trust issue here. Uh, so basically, we want to achieve that stuff where you don't store data on central servers, you store data individually. So let's say we have 10 people in the network and if they want to store data, they will be storing their data in their machines. And of course, there has to be a consensus. Example, if I do a transaction, let's say if I sell, uh, if, if I'm giving an asset, let's say this is an asset, if I give this asset to someone else, that record will be maintained on this node, not just one node, in all the nodes. And they have to come to a consensus. Now for different algorithms, example for uh, maybe Bitcoin, it works on proof of work. Uh, so that's a consensus algorithm there. Then we have Ethereum, which was working on POW, now they shifted to POS, right? Uh, so those are the blockchain technology under all these cryptocurrencies. Now the problem here is they're great, okay? Public blockchain are great. Oh, I have used that word public here intentionally. It's because it, uh, the, all this public blockchain, what it do is they save all this data in all the machines, right? Example, if I do a transaction, if I give this asset to someone else, or maybe if I mention that this asset belongs to me, this data is stored on all the nodes here, right? That means everyone can see it. Then you will say, hey, hey, Navin, that, there's an issue here. Everyone can see that this asset belongs to me, but my name will not be mentioned anywhere. What is mentioned is the address, my public address. So that means I become anonymous, right? Because example, let's say my address is 1234. So 1234 owns this phone. But is it really anonymous? Uh, not exactly. It is a pseudo anonymous. It's because you can still backtrack me. So example, let's say if I give this asset to someone else and then you know the address and you know the person, so you can backtrack from which person it went to which person. So it's not exactly anonymous, it is pseudo anonymous. It's a good thing, you can still track, right? Uh, a lot of people think you can use cryptocurrencies for illegal activities, you can still track them. It's because of they are pseudo anonymous. Now the problem is, since it is pseudo anonymous, anyone can backtrack. Now imagine if you are using this thing in the enterprise network. See, even enterprise want to use this technology. Uh, it's not just only for cryptocurrencies, right? Example, banks, insurance company, supply chain management or supply chain company, everyone want to use this blockchain technology. Some of them just want to try it out to see how thing works out. And some people really are interested to fetch all the important uh, properties which blockchain provides. Example, let's say there's a, there's a supply chain of a product, uh, maybe a, a phone, you can imagine a phone, right? Now this phone is designed by someone, then this phone get manufactured by some other company, then this was distributed by some other company, then it was it is sold by someone else and then it is bought by someone else. 
So the entire chain of that product need to be maintained somewhere. Now, of course, you will say, hey, we are living in the world of internet where all these entities, you know, the, the manufacturer, the designers, the, the distributor, they all are connected. Yes, they are connected, but still they save their own data. There's a, there's a very less chance that they're using central servers. So what they do is seller, or maybe the, let's talk about the uh, company itself, the designer of the mobile phone, they have their own database. Then the distributor will have their own database. The manufacturer will have their own database. Seller will have their own, own database. What's the guarantee that they all have the same records? Most of the time we have that mismatch, right? So what they do is they all come together in the meeting or some in the reports, they reconcile all this, all this data. Uh, so basically we can't say that what you see is what I see. We want to do that. If manufacturer says this is the product, this is the number, the same data should be there with the distributor as well. So all this data has to be in sync. And for that, we can use blockchain here because blockchain says if you store data on one node, it will be distributed to all the nodes. We want to achieve that here as well in the enterprise network. So they can simply use a public blockchain, right? They can say, hey, okay, all these entities, manufacturer, distributor, seller, come together and let's build a network. But the problem is, what if we have extra nodes in the network? Maybe apart from this six or five nodes, we have a malicious node or someone, let's say some other company is a part of this network. Since it is a public blockchain, anyone can join. And that's the risk. If anyone can join, anyone can see the data. And we don't want that. We want to achieve privacy here. In the enterprise network, the most important thing is data privacy. They don't want this data to be leaked to someone else. Not just the exact data, but also the data that there has been a transaction happened between these entities is also a leak. So we have to make sure that we don't use public blockchain in the enterprise network. We have to go for something else. And that is, of course, what's the opposite of public? A private blockchain. So Coda is a private blockchain. So what we can achieve here is privacy. Is that the only thing we are achieving? Uh, okay, so what are the other issues we have in public blockchain? The second issue is the transaction cost. Now, since it is a public blockchain, since we have a proof of work, and this will be verified by uh, miners, of course, right? We, we need certain extra machines in between who will do the verification of the transactions. Now, why do we have to verify transaction? Is because we have nodes who don't know each other. And the moment you have this type of nodes where you don't know about that node, there's an issue of trust again, right? Okay, so basically miners will verify transaction, they will validate, validate transaction, and then they will put that block in a blockchain. Looks good, right? But miners will not do it for free. You have to pay them. So there's a transaction fee involved. On the other hand, if you talk about the enterprise blockchain where you have six nodes, they know each other, right? Oh, how do they know each other? We don't want pseudo address here. We actually want the identity. Every node need a identity. So basically we need some identity service who will provide this identity to each node. Now, when they transact, there's no anonymous anonymity or there's no pseudo anonymous person here. Everyone know each other. Maybe they do KYC and then everyone knows who they're interacting with and the data will be saved properly. We don't need miners. That's why we don't have to pay transition fee. So basically we have solved three issues here. The first one is identity. Second one is privacy. And third one is no transition cost. Okay, so basically Coda is a private blockchain, but who built Coda? So Coda was built by R3. Now, if you just go back to the history of R3, so R3 was a consortium. In 2014, when blockchain was getting famous, all these banks, they got curious to understand this technology. So nine banks came together to, to form a consortium and they thought, okay, let's build a blockchain solution for banks. And that's, that's how they started R3. That's how they started Coda. So Coda was working for them. Later on, it became a general purpose blockchain solution for all the use cases. Now you just name a use case, maybe supply chain, hospital management, anything. You can use Coda there. 
And now R3 is a company and they are running Coda. Coda works in both, it has an open source version plus it also has an enterprise version. If you have technical abilities, if you have a team, of course you can work on uh, the open source version, but if you want, if, what if you want some help? What if you want uh, the enterprise level help? That's why you can go for the enterprise version. So now there's a question in the community that is Coda really a blockchain? So think about the public blockchains. If, it, if you have a blockchain network, what we do is with every transaction, basically you have, let's say five transaction, all these five transaction will come together to form one block. And then the hash of this block will be stored in a next block. And then we have a new block, then the hash of this block will be stored on the next block. So basically it works with blocks. And since we are storing the hash of the previous block in the next block, we say it's a chain, right? And that's why it's a blockchain. But in Coda, we don't have blocks. And that's a tricky point, right? So what we do is we do have a chain, but those are the chain of transactions, not blocks. But still, we have a chain, right? We still have a hash value. So yes, it's a blockchain and no, it's not a blockchain. So the answer is yes and no both. Let's address one more issue with public blockchain and that is finality. Now think about Bitcoin network. The moment you do a transaction on Bitcoin, your transaction will be a part of one block. Now that block will be taking some time for the, for the, for the verification, right? Maybe it will take 10 minutes and that's how it works. So each block will take 10 minutes for the verification and getting added to the network. But the problem is, the moment you have a new block, there is not a final block. There are some issues with the blockchain where, what if there's a malicious node trying to change that block? So your transaction is actually not confirmed for next one hour. So that's how the blockchain of finality algorithm works where it will wait for the six blocks to get added. The moment you have six more blocks after your block, then your block will be called a final block. That means Bitcoin will take around one hour for the finality. Uh, not exactly. It may take one hour, it may take two hours, it may take two days. The problem is we can have a parallel blockchain. So again, there's a, there are some issues with Bitcoin, you can just research them. So we can have a parallel blocks and only one blockchain will be going forward. So the other blocks will have to re-validate re and re-verify. So sometimes it does take time for blocks to get confirmed. We don't want those things to be happening in the enterprise network. We want the transaction to achieve finality at, at the same time. And that's where in the Coda network, when you talk about the consensus, every transaction happens at the same time. Now who will do that? So let's say we have three companies here, A, B and C, and they are trying to build a product. Let's say a mobile phone. So let's say this phone. Uh, so the screen will be built by some other company. The motherboard will be built by some other company. The assembling of this device will be done by some other company. So let's say we have three companies. Now A is responsible for screen, B is responsible for motherboard and C is responsible for the assembling of this device. Now in this case, of course, A has to deal with B because they have to do deal with the circuits. They will be doing some transaction in terms of money and the asset. B and C will be doing some transaction. A and C will be doing, doing some transaction. Now all these transactions will be stored where? So let's say if they have a network between A, B and C. If A do a transaction with B, the data will be stored where? Of course it should be getting stored on A's machine. Also it will be getting stored on B's machine. What about C's machine? The thing is if A and B are doing transaction and if C knows about it, again that's a data, data leak, right? So what happens is Quota provides you a feature where if the transaction is happening between two parties, only those two parties will know about the transaction. Not just data, but even that the transaction happened will be only known by A and B, not even C. Likewise, if you have a transaction between B and C, A will not be knowing about it. So that's how Coda manages the data privacy here. But then if A and B are storing data on their machines, how do you prove that the data is correct? How do you prove that the data is final? And that's where we have a notary service in between. So if let's say A want to do a transaction with B, in this case, A will do a transaction proposal. Now this thing, this transaction proposal will go to B. B has to sign it. And once B signed that proposal, that means A and B agrees on that particular transaction. Now this transition will go to notary and notary will give you a final stamp. Almost same like what is happening in the physical world. 
and that's how you achieve finality. Again, we'll talk about those things in detail later, how Quetta works on machine, uh, how, how Notary works, what are states, ledger, there are so many terms coming up. So this was just a high level overview on Quetta. So I hope you got something from this video. So basically what is Quetta? It's a private blockchain a framework uh, where we can achieve data privacy, we can achieve identity service. Yeah, we have a notary service using which you can achieve finality at the same time. Yeah, so that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed and that, let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for other videos. Bye-bye.